welcome you all to this um, to this morning uh, morning program. And um, I am very happy that we are here together to get this rolling this morning. Let's see. I think we have some music here for this morning. Let me see where. There we go. Give her a new one. Let a new toe um, 
grow up right where the old one was. And do you want God to cover it with gold, like you were hearing last night of those altars? <laughs> Yeah, you know, everything now has to do with gold. The past two days is when you make this, cover it with gold completely. You do this, cover it with gold. We are now golden people. Isn't that something? <laughs> yeah. Dear Father, thank you for bringing healing. Thank you for bringing new to um, from the spare parts, body parts house of heaven, breathe life into it and put it in Devinda's body. Lord, I want you to give this lady miracles because she um, lives in a community and grows up in a culture in which they are sheep. Um, they are peace-loving people, very strong and tough people. We are asking you to perform miracles that we have asked of thee so that, Lord, it will become a sign and a wonder to all who will know that you love her very much and that her God never fails her. We ask you to continue to protect the children in Jesus' mighty name. And we thank you for her pregnancy in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Is, there, is there somebody else that needs special prayer this morning or had a dream? Okay, if there is none, we call on you, dear Jesus. Oh, yes, sir. Yes.
when the vendor finished praying, all of us will join and pray for God to bring order and sense to them about quality medical care. So, Devinda, go ahead with this. Is there any other registered nurse that is online this morning? Okay, none. Regi uh, Devinda, go on. Father God, I ask you to give Barbara's daughter a good job at the hospital where she can do the quality care of only three or four patients. Maybe she needed job in the ICU, PCU, so she can do all her work and give her quality care to the patient and take her out of the nursing home where she is so dangerous and is not safe on her license. Father God, protect her job and give her good pay and a good hospital job in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Now I want you all to join me to pray for God to open doors immediately for her where she will have a good atmosphere to breathe, where she will have less patients to care for so that she will provide quality medical care. Let us all pray. Please join me. Let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray. Please join me to pray. In the name of the Son of the Living God. Is there somebody that is moving around uh, in your home? Then you mute your phone or at your job or something, I don't know. Father, in Jesus' name, I want that kind of situation to be dissolved immediately. I want order and good sense to return back to the practice of medicine and the practice of care, compassionate care. I want Barbara's daughter not to be put in a situation that she loses her license or where it drives her not or where she's bent out or where she is so pressurized that she's discouraged. In the name of the sovereign Son of God, Christ Jesus, who gave his life for Barbara's daughter, I command order. Let order return back and let her have very few patients to provide quality care for. Let an immediate decision be made right now that will provoke them to bring somebody else also to come and help out. Let I know that some of the nursing homes want to cut corners. They want to make so much money and put the workers at risk. And some of them don't even care about their patients or their residents. But Father, we do care. So we are asking you this day for you to move in that nursing home. And Ada, O oh God, you blow the whistle. Let somebody blow the whistle over what they are doing. So if they think that they are making money by cutting corners, and let that place be shut down. But as far as Barbara's daughter is dead, do not let that place shut down until you have found her a better place in the hospital where she will have less load to do and the quality to provide and not quantity. But if that place wanna remain in business, Lord, I ask you to make them to, to, to use good judgment to correct what is going on in that place. I want you to fill Barbara's daughter with high energy, ability, and power. And let them also increase her pay a hundredfold. But that's a lot of work. We ask that things change right away. In Jesus' name, amen. Is there any other person who had a dream who um, or who had a special prayer? Um, I want to report to you all.
way Marian of New York used to work that was giving her such a trying time. We pray that God moves her to a new place and um, that has happened. So we are grateful for that. Her job is intact. Yeah. We are praying this morning for our husband, for God to destroy the spirit of cancer in his body. I will personally call him and pray and rebuke the cancer in his body. Let us pray this morning. We pray for this man. We are asking God to heal him. We curse you cancer out of the body of this man. We curse you a billion times. We command every cancer cell to wither and to die. And wherever the root of this cancer is coming from, we command it to die. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Dear Jesus, we ask you, you are the preacher and the teacher, to make available to your people this morning, make available to your people the word of life. Elevate us to such a high place with your word. You use your word to accomplish things great things, to solve practical problems. So Lord, we ask you to move quickly, move quickly with your word and solve every problems in the lives of your people around the world, wherever they are watching this program. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You guys, you remember that the Easter conference for tonight is 9 p.m. I sent everyone a text message yesterday night to remind you guys of the remaining days of what will be happening. I also sent out a schedule uh, uh, two days ago or so, a schedule of the Easter conference. You have it in your inbox. If you are in my, um, in my uh, directory, you have received an email from me that contains the Easter schedule. Okay, Matthew chapter 1 verse 19. The story we read yesterday was that as Joseph and Mary, or Mary and Joseph, were building their, their nests, making this family to begin to come together, she was found to be with child of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And that was very interesting. And that was where we got the phrase, I am a child of the Holy Ghost. I am a child of the Holy Ghost. I love that phrase. I love, I love, I love that. That is a good, 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 powerful statement. When you make that statement, I am a child of the Holy Ghost, it, it brings a lot to the Almighty that you understand the mystery of who He is and the power of the Holy Ghost. Um, in Matthew chapter 1 verse 19 we read this. This You see the story of Jesus from his birth to his resurrection and ascension reads like a, a myth. It reads like a history. Sometimes when you look at it carefully, you will see how there is a mingling, a mingling and an intermingling across culture of um, across culture of um, of um, um, how do I put it? Of the supernatural intermingling with the natural. The emotional and that is why during this during this um, holy week we will even see human nature at its worst the story of Jesus is so natural and until you begin to look at the other things that mixes with the story then you begin to see where the supernatural plays a very important role Look at 
what verse 19 says. Then Joseph, her husband, this is interesting. Then Joseph, her husband. Now, let me share something with you because I was talking about family the other day. Don't let anyone lie to you. That marriage and family is an outdated cultural phenomenon. Don't let anyone feed you with that lie. Marriage between a man and a woman. Life in a family, in this perspective, is something that God values a lot and honors forever. The role of a husband, as I'm talking about a man, and the role of a wife, and I'm talking about a woman, Being a wife does not make a woman to be a lower class. Or being a husband does not make a man an upper class. It's simply a function. It's simply a function. It's just like the father plays a very important role, separate from Jesus. And Jesus played a separate role from the Father and the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit from both Jesus and the Father. But they are united in everything. But each of them, though united, have different roles that they play. In history at different times and at all times so I want you to be aware of these things and of these mysteries what the role that a husband a male husband play and a female wife I'm saying this because this thing has been made so complicated that a woman who is a husband will say that's me no you are not the person I'm talking about. If you are a woman and you call yourself a husband, you are not part of what I'm saying. So I'm making it very clear. Being a husband is a very important role. And being a wife is a very important role. You cannot do without the other. Here, yeah. Joseph, her husband, this is what the Bible says about him. So that for those of you who want, who want, who want to get married, for those of you who want to be married and want to start a family, this is the kind of man that you should be looking for. So open your ear very well. So for those of you who want a man for marriage, this is what you should be looking for. This is what the Bible says. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just, a just man. What does it mean when the Bible says that somebody is just? J-U-S-T. What does it mean when it says somebody is a just man? Said Joseph, the husband of her, okay, when the Bible says that somebody is just, J-U-S-T, what's the meaning? Is it responsible? Is it responsible? Responsible, again, what, what other word can we use for somebody being very just? Honest, honorable. Honest, honorable, yep, go on, you guys are getting it. Being another translation, or the, the word just could also mean righteous. Being a righteous person. 
another word that I want you to take note of very, very well. Don't lose this word that I'm going to say. Understanding. Being a man of great understanding. The Holy Spirit told me that understanding is wisdom at work. Wisdom is your ability. It's beyond. There is the supernatural wisdom is not just the ability to know the difference between good and evil or to discern things from the other. Supernatural wisdom actually is the ability of God in you for you to make wise choices. That's the real definition of this. You know, if I please write that down for me. Supernatural wisdom is the ability of God in you that you are capable of making wise choices. And that is what we call understanding. Ability to make wise, supernatural ability in you to make wise choices. And that is what we call understanding. So understanding is wisdom at work. While wisdom is knowledge at work, understanding is wisdom at work. In the in the near future, I don't know how soon, I'll be I'll be doing a lot of teachings on this kind of things. I think that is the area in which the core of my power lies. But right now, I am sampling different things so that I can settle for one area later. So this is the kind of man that you should be looking for. It's not people coming to tell you stories and chat with you online and waste your precious time and moments and take your emotion to a different levels and then whack it. They whack it, destroy it, and then they go to the next. The Bible described Joseph as Joseph, her husband, being a just man. A righteous man, a man of great understanding. Another word for just, peaceful, a peaceful person, a quiet person. Listen to this a quiet person. Another word for just, a secretive person, someone who is secret. Someone who can hide, who can cover your weaknesses. Somebody who brings peace and loves peace, not somebody who brings drama. I remember that I was flying during this retreat. And there was a mistake that needed to be corrected. And um, and uh, I was I was really very un unhappy with the way that uh, they, 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 they did put my, my ticket together. And I remember, I remember my administrator, she said, do not worry, it will be all right. It will be all right, don't say any more word. I was like shocked. She said, don't say any more word. It will be fine. And, and, I, and I didn't say a word. And what did she do? She placed the call, got it resolved in a second, in a few minutes. And I didn't need to do anything or say anything. quietness he was a man that if the wife
wife made a mistake, whether in private or in public, he covers her. He protects her. A protector, not somebody who goes about talking, who get drunk and begin to tell the people and begin to talk about himself and his family. No. Just man. See what the Bible said. And not willing. See? Hear what the Bible says. And not willing to make her a public example or ridicule. Not willing. So anyone who is coming into your life, whether they are going to be lifelong friends or lifelong romance or lifelong marriages are people who will not be is a man or uh, should be a man or a woman someone who is unwilling to ridicule you in the public someone not willing to ridicule you mock you and begin to talk about you on Facebook, on Twitter, on Google Plus, or talk to, to his or her parent about you, and they begin to make you a joker. You become a joker and a comedy and a song for drunks. This man was not willing to go about exposing her. Why does the Bible say this? See what it says. He was minded to put her away privately. He wanted to send her away quietly. You see that? That is the kind of a husband you should be looking for. When something huge happened, this man decided, I am not responsible for this pregnancy. But I am, my love for this woman makes me, I want her to go away quietly. I'm going to return her back to her family in a very dignified way. A husband must be somebody a husband must be somebody who holds a husband must be somebody who have decided that your personal dignity and value is far more important than any form of misery oriented drama because he was not responsible and he was just operating on his natural senses and emotion. He decided that the best thing to do is for her to go away quietly. No quarrel, no fight, nothing. No drama. Peaceful. If it was you, how would you handle this? You run straight to your mother and tell your mother, Mom, this girl is pregnant and I'm not responsible. And in those days, they threw stones at such people. When a woman commit adultery or get pregnant for another man who are living, they will bring the person out and stone them to death. I don't hear them stoning the man. They always stone the women. And I don't, I don't understand that. I don't get it. I don't understand why if, if a woman commit adultery, she didn't commit adultery with herself. There was a man involved. Why do they not stone the men too? It's always the woman. A man can go about and, and, and sex around and do all kind of pollution. Nobody will stone him. But a woman will be stoned and killed. That's not fair. So you see, the, the, the justice system was poor. And they still have that in some 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 cultures muslim cultures some cultures like that they still do those kind of things a man and a woman commit the same kind of sin 
but the woman is looked at in a different way from the man. And that's not fair. So Joseph said, I am not going, I will not be willing to go and tell people that my wife committed adultery and have a child outside, outside the marriage. He said he's not going to do it. He's going to let, to take her back to her family quietly and tell them to be quiet about it. That is the sign of a good man. That's what we call a really good man. A man, this shows us that Joseph was a man that controls his emotion and his temper. Is the man in your life a man that can control his emotion and his temper? Is he a man that can see things and keep quiet? We live in an America today where everybody want to talk about everything. Every little thing, people want to report it on Twitter, on Facebook, on this and that. On CNN. When things happen in your family, do you run to your mom and dad to go and begin to report your sisters, your brothers, your cousins, your nephews? Do you have the ability to keep secret things that should be secret? Or you just want to talk about everything because talking is part of freedom of speech? Let me tell you, if you are not careful about what you say, it will be exactly what will destroy you. I know people who say, forget about me, I have to talk about this. I must. I'm very angry. And they go and talk, and the very thing you say becomes a problem. There is a place where people ask you, you said, I don't know. Or, I am not allowed to talk about such things forever. It's sealed. There are things that must be sealed. It's not everything you talk about. It's not everything you see that you should be talking. There is a place for quietness. I know of women who go about talking about their husband to the children. The thing that is happening in the bedroom, the thing that is happening about money, the thing that is happening about this and that. Everything. The woman is telling the kids, the woman is telling everybody. And the man is telling the kids, and the kids now begin to run the family. There are things that are not meant for kids. Oh, this is how our finances are. Oh, this is how things are. Oh, this is. There, is a, there are things that you should agree and know exactly how to put it across to people and not just open their mouth wide and begin to talk. Da -da 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 We are learning this morning about what, how real men behave, how a real husband behave, and not somebody who is easily angry, whose emotion is easily stirred up and begin to shout. Where is that pregnancy from? Your daughter get pregnant, or your son make a girl pregnant, and there you go. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be angry. But do you need to make the situation worse? You beat the girl, throw her out, pack her thing, throw them out of the door. Is that how you handle problem? Joseph decided to do it with understanding. But listen to what happened. In verse number... 20 of Matthew 1. Okay, please. There is somebody who is moving around. You are doing things. Or people are doing things where you are. Could you mute your phone? Press mute on your phone. Look at verse number 20. But while he talked, on these things, while he was thinking of putting her away quietly, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, 
saying, Joseph, thou son of David, see, it addresses, the angel addresses, you see, the, 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 there are things here that I would want to address, and I am tempted to stop so far here. Why was he not called by his father's name? Instead, he was called the son of David. You see, somewhere in the Bible, David became the standard of measure for every good thing. For someone that carries the anointing, the blessing, and the covenant. Two people have emerged in scripture. Abraham and David. Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. We are going to stop there. When you don't understand something, I am pretty sure that this man went and prayed to God and asked God to let him know what is going on. And God then sent an angel in a dream. Joseph did not say that it's possible that I'm having this dream because I love this woman too much. It's possible that I'm having a flu. So that tells you that he was a very close person to God. Don't allow people to fool you with church. Look at the person's natural lifestyle. People, people have learned to speak the gospel language. People have learned to use church, to use Pentecostalism, when they know why, where you are going and what where you go to church, they will go and practice to speak the language that you, you, you like to hear. If you like to shout when you pray, they will begin to pray loud. Men and women have learned how to mimic the real thing. I'm telling you. So that they can get you and destroy you and use you up. They've learned that. It's a game that they play against each other. I'm serious over what I'm saying. Wow. So I want you to be aware of that. There are men who have sat down to learn the gospel language so as to speak it, as to write it, and then they will gain what they want out of it. Just check your Facebook, you will see emails, your Google Plus, your Twitter, the dating site, the chat rooms, you will see what I'm saying. Some people will tell you that they are on dating, dating site and chat rooms to preach the gospel. Why do you want to use those places to preach the gospel? site is a dating site. A chat room is a chat room. There is somebody who is disturbing this thing this morning. Who is this? Okay, mute your phones everybody, please. Mute your phones. There is somebody who didn't mute the phone and you are at your job or you are doing something in your home. He's disturbing everybody.
way or the other will give you a revelation. Since God gave Joseph a revelation, don't you think he will give you a revelation also? God sent an angel to Joseph to reveal to him what was happening. Joseph understand who the Holy Spirit was. Do you understand who the Holy Ghost is? He knew when a real angel turns up in his dream. When an angel appears to you, whether physically or in a dream, do you know? Are you aware of it? These are the questions for you. How do you resolve problems? You must learn how to resolve problems God's way. Please unmute your phone. Open your phone up. You must know how to resolve problems God's way. If you cannot resolve problems God's way, then you are not you are not godly. You are not a Christian. God will send angels. This is the covenant of the sweetened deal. You see how God sent an angel to him to resolve this problem? It means he was a very godly person. So another word for just is godly. Are you godly? Because unless you are closer to God, you will not be able to understand what is happening around you. When God is out to do things to benefit you, you might even oppose it because you don't understand it. Dear Father, I ask you to bless your people with the spirit that you gave to Joseph. It was not just you that gave it to him. But dear father. He purpose. He was willing. Joseph was willing. Joseph was willing, oh God. To be godly. Dear Father, we are asking you this morning to pour upon us the spirit of godliness. Open our physical and supernatural ears and understanding so that we will be able to understand how to solve problems in family very easily and not turn it into a drama. Give us this ability this morning, the ability to solve problems, the ability to solve problems, the ability to solve problems without making it worse in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And amen. And amen. Well, I'll see you guys by 9, uh, by 9 p.m. tonight. God bless you. Bye-bye. Mayam, are you on the line this morning? Mayam, are you on the line? It sounds like a man that's at his job. He doesn't realize the confidence in it. 
Yes, that's what I realized. I'm wondering whether he was even, was he even listening to the conference? Right, I don't think so. That's, that's really crazy. Yeah. 